In the book, you make the statement that George Jessel was the funniest man you ever knew. Not the funniest man on the stage. Ah. The funniest man at the table. At the table he was. At the table with, uh, with Jolson and, and the Marx Brothers and, uh, and uh, Eddie Cantor. But on stage, you would not rate him. Uh, no, no, on stage he was a very good, a very good performer. Yes. But on stage, that's a different ball game. Interesting. Yeah. Now, of course, at you. The table, you know, there's a lot of funny guys at the table. Groucho's at the table. Yes. Oppo and and and, and uh, uh, Danny Danny Kay. Yes. Jack Benny. You know myself. That was some group. Yeah, there's a. There's a they're all gone. Yes, that's right. I'm the only one alive. <laughs> that's uh, unfortunately true. <laughs> How about Fred Allen? You said he was the greatest. Well, Fred Allen was a very funny, funny man. He was a very funny man, but he, he, he never made it in, in television. Why? Well, because he was a, sort of a sarcastic comedian. And when you didn't see him, his sarcasm came over much funnier. I see. When you saw him in person, he, he couldn't help it, but he had a sarcastic face. <laughs> he came over mean. Yes. In radio, you didn't see him. That's true. So they thought he was a very nice man doing sarcastic jokes. But he was a nice man. And the feud that Jack Benny and Fred Allen had, was that a, a pretty real thing, or was it just made up? Oh, no, no, that wasn't made up. That was not? No, no, they started that themselves. Uh, Fred Allen, how did that start, the feud with Fred Allen and Jack Benny? Oh, uh, Jack, uh, Fred Allen made a comment about a four-year-old violinist who played the violin better than Jack Benny. <laughs> and that's how that started. <laughs> Jack Benny answered him, and he answered Jack, and it turned out to be one of the best views in children. And it went on for years, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, which was great. Yes. Yeah. How about Eddie Cantor? He had a lot of energy on stage. Oh, yeah, Eddie Cantor. Uh, there's some, some stories about Eddie Cantor in the book that's funny. The one about Cantor and Jessel, I think, is a funny story. Tell me that one, Mr. Well, um, I, 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 Jessel sent Cantor a wire. He says, I need $1,500. I'm, I'm desperate. So Cantor sent him $1,500. And uh, he was married then to Courtney, Florence Courtney, at uh, Jessel. Yes. Time. And a month later, Cantor met him and said, I sent you $1,500. He said, desperate. What was it? He says, well, I made up with Florence Courtney. He was married to... And I bought her a bracelet for the fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Cantor said, "But your wire, and your wire is that desperate." He said, "The Cantor, would you send me the money if I said bracelet?" <laughs> How about somebody you don't hear much about today, and that's Frank Fay. You didn't like him, did you? Well, but he was a great, great, great artist. He was. He was the best liked comedian. He was absolutely fabulous. What was so good about him, Mr. Burns? Well. He, he was just a, 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 a he did great things. He did uh, things like on the stage, the uh, Caruso singing Strutter's Ball, <laughs> uh, John Barrymore doing the Charleston. Yes. He did uh, all great things, but he, he, he wasn't a nice man. He was married to Barbara Stanwyck, wasn't yeah, he? That's right. Right. That's right. That's right. How about Joe? Oh, what was the, What's the story about Barbara Stanwyck and man? Right. Oh yeah. When she when he sued Barbara Stanwyck at. Uh, Oh, she sued him for divorce or something. And they were in court. And they said to Frank Fay, what do you do? He says, I'm the world's greatest comedian. <laughs> so somebody at the Lambs Club said to Frank Fay, did you say that you were the world's greatest comedian? He says, I had to. I was under oath. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody liked Frank Fay. Everyone I've spoken to said he was a son of a bitch. Well, he was a tough guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was very religious. He was. I'd watch him at the Brown Derby, and uh, every time he'd mention somebody that died, he'd say a little prayer. And uh, I used to watch him. He, uh, he orders he, he order his food. And I'd go over to the table. I'd mention seven or eight people that are dead. And he kept saying little prayers. By that time, his food was cold, and I'd leave. <laughs>